Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Paul Romanuk along with, drum roll please, for the first time this year, former NHLer Craig Simpson. He'll be joining us periodically throughout the season to sit down and chat with some of his uh, former opponents. One guy I know you enjoyed talking with, uh, Mike Medano. Definitely, Paul. Mike Medano is one of the best offensive players in the National Hockey League. As an opponent of Mike's, one thing that struck me about him watching him from the bench was he was a highlight goal waiting to happen. This guy's got incredible open ice speed, handles the puck incredibly well in, in traffic, and is probably one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the National Hockey League. Best one-on-one -on -one players in the NHL, and rumor has it also one of the best dress players in the NHL. There's no question. We had a chance to hook up with Mike in the summertime, and he showed us his clothing line. He's got a business going in the offseason, keeps him busy on his off days during the hockey season. And one thing about Mike Modano, sitting down and talking with him, that you realize is his pride and responsibility in really making hockey a focal point in the Lone Star State. Is, is that a Modano shirt there you've got on? You know what, I'm still waiting. I'm yeah, not sure. Have uh, you got yours? I don't have it. It's not a Modano vest, I can <laughs> assure you of that. We're still waiting. Mike, take it away. Dallas net is empty with a sixth attacker on. Here's Gagne, winding, passing in front, a shot. I'll take you back now to where it all began. Uh, maybe walk through us a little bit how you got interested in playing hockey. Actually, it was a friend of my dad's who said, uh, you know, maybe you should get Mike into hockey. It's, uh, you know, it's a great sport. My dad's friend loved hockey, and uh, you know, my dad came home and said, would you like to go skating one day? And I was about seven years old at the time, and uh, went skating and just kind of fell in love with it. I think uh, Mike Medano's greatest asset is, is also his speed. Um, and when you see him off the ice, you realize how big he is. He's 6'3", 6'4", and to be able to have that agility and that uh, skating stride is really a great advantage for him because when he gets in tight, he's got the strength to hold the defenseman off, but uh, he's also got the speed to beat him wide. What was it like uh, draft day? Uh, trying to realize a dream of make it to the NHL, you hear your name being called. It was exciting. I mean, uh, Trevor Linden and I didn't really know who uh, was going to go one or two, and they kind of kept us in suspense the whole night and the whole morning. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure Trevor was just as nervous as I was sitting there waiting. And uh, there was a lot of hype between the two of us and who was going to go one and two. And uh, it was, uh, it was a great feeling once you get that name called. Well, it was certainly a sign of things to come. Your rookie year was a fantastic one. Uh, 75 points, you were runner-up to rookie of the year. How did you sort of adjust to that success so early in your career? I think Pierre Paget was great. I think he just kind of let me play and, and play as, you know, as a player they drafted me. Just go out there and kind of have some fun. Again, uh, we'll be there. You had a 50-goal season. Your first in the NHL. Maybe walk us through that year. Obviously, to score 50, you must have had some incredible streaks along the way. It was a uh, it was a fun year. I mean, it's the first game against Detroit. Uh, you know, I had a, a fluky backhand that went in, and it just was things uh, signs of things to come. And then the next night in Toronto, I had a couple of deflections, and um, it just started rolling from then. And uh, you know, I had a couple of lapses. I, I, I had a knee injury during the halfway through the year where I missed about eight games, and then I had a concussion. I missed a couple more, so I ended up still being able to reach that 50 goals in 76 games. So it was a uh, um, things went really well. Talk a little bit about Dallas. Uh, I mean, obviously being in the South is a little bit different for hockey, but how's the adjustment been for you? It's been a great thrill. It was just a fresh start, try to get a fresh start to my career, and coming down here was a great, uh, a great move for me, and the first year turned out to be a great success for me and the team where we broke our record for most points in the season for a team and wins, and our home record was great. And, uh, I think everybody was looking forward to the change and the new president. How have the Dallas fans responded to the team? They've been great. I mean, they were, they were pretty much excited to have us down as anybody was, and um, they couldn't wait till hockey started. And once it did, I mean, they've, they've, they've been attracted to the game ever since, and they love the speed and they love the physical contact of the game, and uh, the reunions has been a great arena to play, and the fans really get into it. The atmosphere is great. How are you finding fitting into your role as really the... Uh, uh, the leader of this squad, uh, your age now, you're 25, 26, and 
they're definitely looking to you as the leader of the club. Um, it's been, uh, I mean, it's been an easy process. I mean, we've had always a lot of uh, older fellows have been, uh, you know, kind of taking the burden of leadership roles. But, you know, I find myself finally uh, slowly catching up to those guys. And, uh, um, you know, Bob puts a lot of pressure on everybody on this team. And, and he's, he wants, he's, in, uh, he's an expert at everything. He kind of knows the game. He really knows, uh, he's got the respect of the players. And for me, it's been, uh, it's been pretty easy. Um, I just try to go out there and play my game. Eklund gets it in front, scores! Modano going to the net. What kind of things uh, do you do to try to keep a balance between uh, the pressure of the game and getting away from it? Um, I guess being down here where it's nice and warm, I mean, you can spend a lot of time outside. I mean, when you're up north and you're locked in the house for six months because it's too cold or too much snow outside to go outside, I mean, guys can... I mean, you can you can go crazy just sitting there thinking about the game too much. But being down here, you can be outside, and I mean, you can go to go to practice in January with your shorts or your top down in your car. Um, the golf courses stay open all year round, so I mean, there's time where you can go out and blow some steam off instead of just going home and taking it home with you and you know, kind of just too dwelling on it too much. We had a chance to look at the uh, uh, Dallas Magazine and had you down as one of the ten sexiest people in Dallas. So is this something that maybe can lead to a future career? Are you interested in doing any kind of acting or modeling or anything like um, that? I don't know. I did, uh, I've done some stuff for uh, George Romani here in town and uh, I mean it, it's something that's easy when you just stand and, and uh, I like it. It's, it's a lot of fun and, and I've done some uh, runway stuff and it, it's a little uh, it's a little different but uh, you know when you, when you get used to it after a while but you know maybe I can get into it and see what happens. You gotta move in a little bit. I've heard that you're somewhat of a computer hack and you're interested in the internet. How did, how did that come about? Actually, Ward, who, who represents me in marketing down here, represents Internet America, too. So um, he helped me get involved and, and brought out a guy who, can, uh, who hooked me up on that. And um, I think during the season when you spend a lot of time at home and just relaxing, I spend a lot of time just kind of um, fiddling around with it and just kind of you know, learning a lot about it. I mean, there's areas I haven't even gone into, and I spent so many hours on that thing. Tell us a little bit about your uh, number nine sportswear. Well, we got involved in that about four or five years ago in Minnesota. We were just uh, sitting around and, and figured uh, um, some friends of mine came up with ideas to start making some hats and maybe some jackets and shirts. And um, it was kind of just small talk and just kind of got uh, pushed aside. But um, an artist came with a design and we kind of picked it out and kind of took it on and on and started putting some money into it. And it kind of kind of did some good things for us and we're excited about the response from people and coming down here I contacted Ward and he kind of took over from it and it's been great. With the, uh, the different colored sleeves maybe try a, um, a navy blue or a greenish and kind of, let's stay with the khaki color with the jean and again with the with the shield that we talked about before. Do you like the shield? No, I think no. just simply sticking with the nine you know even go with the same color sleeve with the, the nine logo right here with the same. Up down the ice, here comes Modano, two on one with Courtnall. Modano shoots, score! How does Mike Modano want to be remembered as a hockey player? Oh man, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think one thing I always thought about trying to be is, is a, a, a consistent player and being recognized as a player who came, you know, ready for training camp and ready to uh, to play a season and play a full season and be competitive and consistent. And so that's a tough question. I mean, it's uh, you know, I, I certainly uh, I certainly have Neil Broad, and I think he'll be remembered forever in Minnesota hockey. And, and maybe uh, maybe Texas hockey will be a, a something for me. And uh, you know, if the, the 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 sport keeps growing down here and we win a couple championships, hopefully I'll be remembered as uh, you know being the backbone of Texas hockey. Maybe.